around here and seeing the trees that survived the fire, I'm so happy that uh, this great McDonald uh, um, area wasn't compromised. Uh, thank you for your introduction and uh, thank you to the Regional Recreation Corporation and Total for this opportunity to speak here. My name is Gail Gallup and I'm president of the Métis Local. We have been the Aboriginal Rights Bearing Organization representing the Métis here in Fort McMurray since 1987. Typically, we fight to protect our members' rights and culture by advocating on their behalf to the three levels of government. Since the fire, we have transformed into a service organization, making sure all of our members, particularly our elders and youth, are protected and supported. Today is certainly an auspicious day, and I wanted to take a few moments to discuss the importance of McDonald Island to our Métis membership and those gathered here today. As you may know, the McDonald family, where McDonald Island actually gets its namesake, was a proud Métis family. The father, John McDonald, was from Scotland, and he married a local Cree woman and began their family on this island in 1889. This location provided, <coughs> provided a strategic and safe location for the generations of Métis who were born and raised here. Many of our elders today can remember the stories their ancestors told them about the importance of the island. One such elder was Margaret Gladue. She was John McDonald's granddaughter. Today we are not far from the exact location where she described life before the bridge across the Sny. For anyone to get to the island, they had a rowboat on the island. You had to stand on the shore at the Sny and yell and holler, and the dogs would bark so John would know somebody is yelling. So they'd come and row across to get you. That was the system back in those days. Yell at the dogs, the dogs bark at the owner, and then along came the rowboat. Things sure have changed. I wanted to share one more story with you today, uh, why it's so meaningful to us. The Métis had a small community right where those apartment buildings stand today, the big towers there. Bit by bit, our land was being taken away by the Crown, or displaced by industry, or the municipality. We wouldn't learn that it was being sold out from under us until it was too late. Then in the 1980s, our Métis citizens were called to a meeting. And while they were there, they bulldozed that community. There was no explanation no compensation, and to this day, no apology. So that's why a day like today is so important. It is a recognition of the contribution and history of the Métis people, of our struggle, of our survival, despite all odds. The words and deeds of our elders that took place on this island will be forever told by our descendants. And just as I quoted them today, one day our descendants will repeat these words now. The McMurray Métis will never be forced from our lands again. Only by knowing where we have come from and what we have endured, one can truly appreciate what is happening here today. So thank you to Total, to the RCC, and to the wonderful artists who put the heart and soul into these works of art. To conclude, I would like to read a quote from 1885 by the great leader of the Métis people, Louis Riel. My people will sleep for 100 years, but when they awake, it will be the artists who give them their spirit back. So to these wonderful artists who have given us so much, and to the amazing patrons who made this all possible, think on these words and consider what your artwork truly heralds, the awakening of a people. You are decorating the backdrop upon which we will rise again. For this we say thank you. Hi, hi and don't stop, because there are many scenes yet to come, many stories yet to tell, and we will rely on you to help narrate this incredible rebirth of our journey. Hi, hi.